We already know that agricultural runoff is a significant cause of the water pollution that causes algae blooms in Lake Champlain, Lake Ontario, the St. Lawrence River, smaller lakes and streams. But it's not the only source. Runoff from roads, septic systems, and other businesses are also part of the problem. A national green group is pointing its finger at one North Country dairy farm for causing pollution. And the farm is like, hey, we're following all the complicated environmental laws that we're supposed to. A lawsuit over cow manure on today's Story of the Day. Support for Story of the Day is provided by Seacom Credit Union, serving the financial needs of people throughout northern New York and Vermont. In person, online at seacom.org, and on your smartphone. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Thursday, April 6th. First up, a new investigation out today reveals details about luxury trips Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas has been treated to, including vacations to the Adirondacks. The reporting was done by ProPublica. It looks into Thomas's relationship to Texas billionaire and Republican megadonor Harlan Crow. Crow owns an Adirondack great camp on Upper St. Regis Lake near Paul Smith's and has hosted Thomas there almost every summer for more than two decades, according to the report. The investigation finds the visits are part of a bigger trend of Thomas accepting expensive vacations around the world. There's no strict code of ethics for the Supreme Court, though justices are encouraged to avoid even appearance of impropriety. Crow denied in the story ever trying to influence Justice Thomas on any legal or political issue over their decades-long relationship. More than six months after the state's chief judge, Janet D. Fiore, resigned, New York still does not have a replacement. But it could still be some time before that happens. Governor Kathy Hochul has until April 23rd to make a new selection and then seek approval from the state Senate. Karen DeWitt explains. In New York, the governor gets to appoint the chief judge and the other six judges on the state's highest court, the Court of Appeals, with the advice and consent of the state Senate. Governor Kathy Hochul chose Hector LaSalle as her choice for chief judge in December from a list of names of qualified candidates it was put forth by the Judicial Nomination Commission. But she failed to win the support of Democrats who lead the Senate. They believe that LaSalle was too conservative to head the court. He was voted down by the Senate Judiciary Committee. After a weeks-long standoff, minority party Republicans filed a lawsuit to try to force a full vote of the Senate. Two days before a judge was to hear the case, Democrats held a vote on the Senate floor, and LaSalle was rejected again. Uh, it's 20 days, 39. The nomination fails. The process started over with a new list of names. They include three judges who are already on the Court of Appeals, Shirley Troutman and Rowan Wilson, who are both African-American, and Anthony Canataro, who is the acting chief judge. If Hochul chooses one of them, then she would also need to pick a new associate judge. The governor has not yet announced her choice, but she signaled she might pick one of the three. The legislature, at Hochul's request in late March, approved special legislation Legislation. It would allow Hochul to choose two judges from the new list of names. That would avoid having to go back to the nominating commission for a third time, a process that could take several more months and leave the court with just six judges for as long as a year. Hochul, in an interview with Public Radio, did not rule out picking one of the three sitting judges to be chief judge and another from the same list to be a new associate judge. That is certainly one of the options, and a bill just gives us maximum flexibility. Hochul says she still believes LaSalle would have been the right person for the job. She says he was neither conservative nor liberal, but someone who let the law and legal precedents govern his decisions. She says she will seek the same qualities in her next choice. I want someone who looks at each case that comes before them without a political leaning, where you can say this person is left, this person's right. That is not how we lift up jurisprudence in the state of New York. We want someone who's fair, open-minded, smart, has experience. So I've not wavered from the objectives that I had before. Those are still my objectives today. Even before Hochul has named her new choice, there are already some wrinkles emerging. Senate Republicans are once again threatening to go to court. They say the state's constitution does not allow for two nominees for the Court of Appeals to be chosen from just one list. Senate GOP leader Robert Ort says the commission needs to come up with a separate set of names for each opening on the court. 
the law, I think, itself, I do believe in talking to some attorneys is unconstitutional. Um, you know, there may be other groups that also might be interested in bringing a lawsuit. Government reform groups who supported the creation of the Judicial Nomination Commission back in the 1970s have also said they think the new law is unconstitutional. The process to choose a new chief judge was already facing delays. Hochul has said that she does not expect to name her new choices until after the state budget is finished and the spending plan is already going to be at least 10 days late. In Albany, I'm Karen DeWitt. The village of Lake George's first new mayor in more than 50 years was sworn in Monday. Ray Perry succeeds Bob Blaze, who was the longest serving active mayor in the country before he retired last month. According to the Glens Falls Post Star, Perry is an independent contractor who's been on the village board since 2007. He ran for mayor unopposed. A national environmental not-for-profit is suing a Jefferson County dairy farm, claiming its manure is polluting the St. Lawrence River. The owner of Wood Farms says the lawsuit is meritless, and the farmer appears to have the State Department of Environmental Conservation on his side. Here's the story I reported. The Center for Food Safety, based in Washington, D.C., filed a lawsuit in federal court late last month. It claims Wood Farms in Cape Vincent, a farm milking more than 1,000 cows and raising another 1,000 heifers, is violating the Clean Water Act by polluting a nearby creek that flows into the St. Lawrence River. Charles Tebbett is an attorney representing the not-for-profit. The Wood Farm is discharging pollutants, it's discharging manure, Uh, from its facility into uh, Wheeler Creek, which feeds the St. Lawrence River. The lawsuit claims the farm's manure spreading plan is saturating the soil and causing runoff. And Tebbit says the farm's clay-lined manure lagoons are insufficient. So the lagoons are leaking to groundwater, which uh, they're only less than a mile away from the river. But a letter from the State Department of Environmental Conservation, which oversees and inspects dairy farms' environmental operations, disputes the Center for Food Safety's allegations. It says the DEC did issue a violation to Wood Farms for polluting Wheeler Creek in 2014. But subsequent inspections found the problem was fixed and the farm hasn't been cited since. The DEC says inspections in 2019 and 2022 found the farm's manure lagoons properly designed and found its manure spreading within best management practices. It disgusted. That, like in this day and age, you can just, somebody's doing everything by the book, you're going to go, oh, I'm, I'm filing a lawsuit against this dairy. Lyle Wood, co-owner of Wood Farms, says his farm has been a state dairy of distinction for years. He says he follows all the regulations for concentrated animal feeding operations, or CAFOs, as the letter from the DEC indicates. We, we have to abide by uh, zero tolerance, you know, and it's a law. You think I want anything to happen to us? Grandpa started the farm in 1945 with 13 cows, and I pride myself on, you know, having a nice place. The driveways are paved. I mean... Charles Tebbett, the lawyer for the not-for-profit, says the bigger issue is that even with state and federal CAFO regulations, modern industrial dairy farming produces too much manure to manage safely, and eventually it pollutes rivers and lakes. The nitrates and phosphorus in the manure lead to algal blooms uh, in the St. Lawrence River. They're what are called nutrients that are the key nutrients in triggering algal blooms. I asked Tebbit if this lawsuit is a test case to be applied to other dairy farms around the North Country. He said no, but... And this is also, a, if you will, a shot across the bow to the other dairies that they better clean their act up too. Farm co-owner Lyle Wood says if the Center for Food Safety proceeds with its lawsuit, he'll fight it in court. David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio. It's me again, but back in Story of the Dayland. We're almost at the end of our spring fundraiser, folks. So many people have donated to pay for regional and local journalism that matters, facts they can trust, and now it's your turn. And it's urgent right now. We still have thousands of dollars left to raise to pay the bills for public radio journalism. Please take a moment. Make your donation right now. 
Give 10 bucks or a thousand bucks. The amount doesn't matter so much as the fact of saying, yes, I'm willing to pay for local journalism. Go to ncpr.org slash give right now. Thanks. Music today by Lost in Beijing of Keen and Evan Veenstra of Gananoque, Ontario. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.